Yeah, Please. so thank you for the short introduction. Let me just briefly also introduce myself. My name is Darko Krasdanovsky. I work as a solutions architect by Mobile Iron. I um, have a, a vast amount of experience in Android. I've been doing Android development since the very early days of Android, so 1.6 1, 1. and Onwards, right now I work as uh, in the in the team responsible for talking with partners. Uh, so basically, people that are trying to do a deeper integration into EMM and just trying to help them out how to do it, a better job at it, how to be more successful at deploying their apps into the enterprise. Um, so, um, what are we going to talk about? Uh, sorry, the presentation is not. <laughs> Good. So what's the, uh, on the agenda today is basically, um, has anyone here worked with an EMM solution so far? So do you have any experience with that? Okay, good. Um, so we are just going to briefly mention what an EMM is. We are going to talk about what AppConfig is, which is an interesting, uh, quite an interesting topic in this area. And then we are actually going to do some uh, code examples of, of something called a, a managed configuration. Um, so how many of you here are developers and trying to build apps? Okay, good. So I'm pretty much going to focus on the, on the developers, right? This is not a, this is pretty more, more or less like a more a technical uh, presentation and trying to get uh, developers to better understand like what is an EMM and how to actually handle situations around that. So let's start with um, what is an EMM. <clears throat> so basically, I, I saw that, that many of you already have some experience with that. So I'm just going to say in the context of what we're going to talk about today, this is uh, kind of the infrastructure of, on which uh, enterprises uh, develop and manage their uh, mobile devices. So imagine you're a huge enterprise, maybe thousands of devices, right? Uh, you need a way to, to ensure that all these devices can be managed so you can enroll them and stop, install the required applications on those devices and all those things based on the team you're working with. So for example, different apps for sales, for management people, for um, so all kinds of different situations, right? And then you want to actually secure the devices, so you want to ensure that the corporate data stays on the device, and if you, for example, by, by some chance you lose the device, something happens, right? You want to immediately be able to wipe that data off, so you don't want to lose any of that corporate information and protect the privacy and the data integrity. Um, so uh, talking, going forward and uh, talking a bit about the challenges when trying to deploy your solutions to the enterprise, right? So many of us are, as developers, are, we, we are typically very used to this concept of like we build our apps, uh, we then go to Google Play, we publish them, and pretty much every one of us knows this process and how this process goes. Uh, when our apps end up on Google Play, the users just browse for them on the Google Play Store, download them, and just start using them, right? Um, this, is, this has been traditionally slightly different in the enterprise world, right? So you cannot... That, that, uh, this, the, the enterprises are typically a, a couple of steps behind. So uh, what, what has been a long kind of a, a on, ongoing process, and I've had a lot of experiences this, in this, is that you definitely um, have to talk with, the, as you build the application, you have the use cases of deploying to different organizations. So you're not directly deploying to the end users most of the time but you are going through some kind of an organizational process. Basically, you go with, through the IT admins maybe, so part of the uh, different segments of the organization, right? And uh, at some point, you have to end up, uh, your app needs to end up at the employee's hands. Uh, typically, a lot of issues come up when trying to do this. You, have, you end up exchanging a lot of emails with, with the organization, right? Uh, depending on the size of the organization, they might even demand different things from you. And this is like a complicated thing, right? Imagine an or organization of 1,000 employees. They would want to have some sort of a branding. We see a lot of organizations actually, actually having their solutions deployed on-prem. So they would probably even require you to change some URLs and tweak some configurations in the, in the application itself. So this would cause actually your process some delays in the deployment, some, some delays in the development, like headaches for the developers, right? Trying to figure out how to do this effortlessly. And uh, 
basically, this is kind of the process that we typically encounter. So we go to the, the organization for the first time, we talk about our application, then they, are, they have some sort of a demand, so we need to configure this and that. So we go back, we, we end up uh, get, creating some sort of a, co a fork of our application, maybe some different build variant, some, something else that kind of changes the process, and now we have to maintain more than just one maybe code revision. We have to maintain these build versions. Um, <clears throat> so we build a version specifically maybe for them, right? And then we go back and uh, they are deploying it. And this is an ongoing process which actually happens uh, with every update maybe uh, occasionally, so it requires a, quite a significant uh, amount of time and effort. So what is the idea behind kind of the modern enterprise deployments and how this um, what's the idea going forward and like, what, what are some of the recommended approaches of solving these issues? Is uh, Basically, there are two aspects of this. One aspect is something uh, that Google came up with, is basically trying to go back to this process of uh, just developers interacting with Google Play through something called the Manage Google Play Store, and then uh, together with an EMM solution actually uh, get, get this going forward and uh, try to kind of separate the responsibilities of what, is a, what an app developer needs to do and what an actual IT admin needs to do. So the process is, is going to be modified into something similar to this. So you end up, as a developer, what you really want to do is just focus on your application, develop your application, publish it to the Google Play Store, and basically you don't want to deal with the specifics of the organization afterwards, right? The responsibility of the IT uh, part of the, of the org and uh, uh, developer operations and so on is to actually get this application from Google Play, configure it somehow, and <coughs> then deploy it to, to all the users within the organization, manage the user groups, and so on and so forth. Any tweaks to, conf to the configuration, they don't need to involve you. They shouldn't involve you as a developer. Uh, the idea is that they can handle this process by themselves. Um, so uh, we are going to introduce something. Uh, this is a fairly old, um, old thing. It's called the App Config Community. Uh, you can find more details on this website. So uh, the idea uh, is uh, a couple of years old. So. Um, uh, all the EMM providers uh, came together and formed a community around standardizing specific ways of working with, uh, within enterprises, right? So this, this involves um, a lot of things like standardizing um, uh, ways to communicate with the, uh, with the platform directly. So the idea was to introduce native APIs, which we are going to talk about today trying to do stuff without actually every EMM providing maybe some proprietary SDKs that developers need to use, some very EMM-specific, like product-specific code that you have to figure out and solve. So the idea is that everything you do is based around a standard, everything is, you do is based around the community, and everything you do works across um, all the different organizations and EMM vendors you can run into. <coughs> So what are the, some of the benefits around, uh, so what do developers get from this? Uh, basically, as I said, this is a very uh, EMM vendor neutral uh, solution. So you develop your application for one EMM, you test it with one, and you can pretty much be sure that it will run across every single organization and every single EMM you encounter during your, uh, during the, uh, during during your um, sales cycles inside the company. So uh, you don't need to use any SDKs. What we are going to talk about today uh, is actually going to use native Android API, so it has nothing to do with importing any sort of SDKs. And uh, there is a very common concept within uh, EMMs. Uh, they all kind of introduce some sort of an API wrapper tools to sort of get your applications and modify them without you actually needing to write code, and this kind of becomes this vendor-specific process which everyone is kind of trying to avoid at this um, point. Why, is, it, why this, is this good for the enterprises? We, because, again, they, they have access to a huge ecosystem of applications and integrations which are pretty much guaranteed to work, right? Uh, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to get uh, 
users onboarded on, on this application, so they are optimized for the enterprise. Um, here is a list of pretty much all the vendors that are right now part of this AppConfig community. And uh, basically, here are, uh, this is a list of all the applications that right now have some sort of integration related to what AppConfig is uh, all about. So you can, this is not even the full list. Every, new apps are getting added every day. This also applies for in-house apps. So if you want to improve things, even if you're building an in-house application for one organization, you can still go to this website and find out how to do that better. Um, so when, as developers, we all, always want to jump into code, right? But it's very important to understand that in some cases, you don't need to write any code. The way uh, this is meant to work in most cases is that uh, the MM would uh, provide integrations with the OS itself, and uh, you, would, uh, you would end up just be needing to check certain checkboxes to enable or disable certain features and use already existing implementations that the, the system provides, right? Uh, some com common use cases would be kiosk lockdowns. So I've done that in the past. It's, it's kind of a tedious process, right? So the, you get this out of the box without doing any sort of coding, any sort of implementation. Uh, things like VPNs for connecting to on-premise solutions. So we've handled that as well, trying to figure out how to to get to an application from, uh, to get to our own organization's network from the outside, uh, and a bunch of even smaller stuff like dis disabling copy paste screen captures and a lot of other things. So the point here is that you have to actually, the best thing to do is actually first go into the, into the organization, figure out what EMM system they're using and try to figure out what options you can use to, to basically speed up your developer development to optimize your application without even writing any sort of code. Of course, there is something that you, where you actually need to write some code. And this is, uh, this is something called manage configurations. This is what we're going to go a bit more into today. <coughs> Sorry. So the idea is that uh, an IT admin would end up seeing some UI like this in the EMM console where they can configure um, certain values. So um, what are actually managed configurations, right? Uh, the process would go something like this. Uh, so you as an app developer, um, you would require something like a server URL to be configured for your specific application, right? The organization set up your solution on premise or somewhere in a private cloud. You need to customize this URL. So instead of building a separate version of your application, a separate fork, there is another option. That option is to use managed configurations. So the way you do it is basically you define uh, that you require this value, in, the, in my case, server URL to be configured by the IT admin and delivered to your organization. You publish your application, and this is pretty much where, where the first part of the cycle ends. Then the EMM admin would import it into their system. Uh, the, the system would read the metadata in your application, figure out that there are keys that needs to be configured, right? Uh, the EMM admin then would provide values for those things. They will save and push those changes. And then at the end, you as an application developer, you need to write some code to actually read that value and then actually use these values in your application and you know, do whatever you need. <coughs> yeah, similar on, a, on a, a bit of a bigger scale, this works for any key value pairs, not just, um, I don't not just single, single items. So there are plenty of options. Um, and what is the idea behind this? The b idea behind this and why you want to do this is that, is that beca because you're empowering the IT admin, right? So uh, imagine you are an organization which uh, manages 50 or more apps. We have cases where organizations have even hundreds of applications. And imagine if you want to configure those applications so each of them have a separate console where you need to, where an admin needs to go into and tweak some things like the UI, the look, or whatever it might be, and how difficult a process that becomes for an IT admin. So the idea behind this is to actually optimize the user experience for the admin, make the whole process much simpler, uh, less of a communication is needed because everything is right there, everything should be explained and easy to access and configure. Um, uh, so. The question is what can actually be configured right now. So any combination of key value pairs you can think of, 
you can configure and send them back. Uh, so you can request them, and uh, the IT admin can configure values for them and send them back to your application. Plus, this is quite an interesting thing that you can actually uh, send some dynamic properties or properties based on the device. Uh, things that even as developers right now we cannot uh, cannot even read, uh, like the Wi-Fi MAC address, for example, is a property which not, is not available after Android 6.0. So using something like this, you can actually get these values back to your application. So there are some values that you can actually get which you typically would not be able to, to use in your application. Some device values, again, some user values. This becomes pretty important in identifying the user. So uh, <coughs> you can deliver things like the domain name of the organization, values from the certificates, things like the user's first, last name, email address. Uh, you can even deliver something like their passwords uh, if the admin actually configures them and decides that they want to send them to you. So it's a pretty powerful thing. Uh, of course, you can also configure custom attributes. So uh, a lot of these organizations would have in the background some sort of a system that would be um, uh, Active Directory, some sort of identity provider, which actually uh, stores additional values for each user. So you can actually map them and just get them to your devices as well. So less input for the user in your application uh, that is needed. So what, in my line of work, in my experience, what we, end, we, we typically run into scenarios, and these are very common use cases that applications do and implement, is basically uh, easing out the login. So imagine that your application, the best user experience you can get within an organization is actually providing uh, the user with a seamless login. Like Im you deploy the application, the user installs the application, and then they need to enter either the least amount of data or nothing at all, right? So being able to deliver something like the username here is a really powerful feature. Uh, I talked about the server endpoints and things like that. And then um, I would mention that a, a huge use case and a very important thing is to actually deliver uh, things that the admin can control in terms of security. That means that a lot of them don't want to send analytics to you, maybe, and things like that. So as soon as you provide those options, like just check boxes to disable certain uh, data analytics, certain maybe crash logging even, and a bunch of various features, maybe disable certain things for certain users, that already, you're basically becoming a favorite to the IT admin, right? Uh, um, what? Um, so with every good, there is something bad as well, right? Uh, what, are the, what are the issues and common kind of pitfalls and drawbacks of, of using these managed configurations? Well, the first thing that, that really comes to mind and a lot of people have issues with is the testing part. So in order to test your integration, you have to have an EMM instance. You have to publish your application through Google Play Manage Store, which you can also do privately and through the beta channels. That's not a problem. But still, you have to kind of get some expertise in the EMM um, area and be able to go through this process and test your integration. Uh, we offer some help with that, so like free test instances for developers and things like that. So if you ever need anything, that can also be simplified quite a lot. Uh, this only works with Android Enterprise, so you cannot deliver configurations if your device is not enrolled in an EMM and it's not part of Android Enterprise. Um, we see that enter Android Enterprise is growing quite a lot, but it still are certain cases and certain organizations which, which are not using it. Um, so, uh, there are some restrictions on the APIs, and uh, again, only primitive values can be delivered, but those, some of those things can be worked around. Um, <clears throat> basically, what you want to uh, ensure when you're, before you try to do this is to know your audience. Basically, talk to the organization, figure out what their device fleet is. Are they using Android Enterprise or not, right? You need to figure all these things out before you actually invest the time. And this would prove to be very helpful further along the path. Um, so let's talk briefly about uh, this is quite a simple process. I'm sure everyone will, will get it. It's basically how to actually do the implementation of Android managed configuration. So what you start with uh, is adding this to your Android manifest. You basically define that you're going to request um, 
a managed configuration. This is a part of an API which is called App Restrictions. It's been renamed to Managed Configurations uh, quite recently, so you can find references, more reference to app, app restrictions than to Managed Configurations when looking through the documentation. Uh, so the next step would be defined to define this XML resource, and this would be kind of the template uh, of how you would build this up. Uh, a list of restrictions. Each restriction uh, typically would have a couple of required parameters and a couple of optional ones, and they would change based on what the type of the restriction is. Uh, just going briefly over the, the actual restrictions and how they look like in the EMM, so you can have like a Boolean field. Uh, then you can have a, uh, enter a, any type of a string value. You, this is how Typically, you would uh, indicate that you want to uh, provide the dynamic parameter, so the dollar sign and the brackets username email address would actually send the actual user's email address as a, as a, as a value in this um, attribute. Things like a number input, so those would also be validated on the server, on the admin side. Um, you, would, you would be able to do like drop downs. Um, um, here, there are some differences in what's required, so entries and entry values need to be specified, uh, as well as multi-select, so you can provide things that option to choose between multiple stuff. Uh, there is a field type called hidden, which I've never seen used so far. I'm not sure what's the use of it, so if you don't really have a, a clear idea how to use it, just stay away, I would say. For now, let's see what the Android guys come up with in the future. Um, so this is one of the kind of more important things, and this has been added uh, a bit later, so API level 23. This is the ability to specify arrays of, of key and values, so uh, the configuration would look something like this, and then you end up, uh, the IT admin would end up do, uh, seeing something like this, so imagine adding multiple values and then like a dynamic list of attributes that you can configure, right? Uh, <coughs> Uh, the way you read the configured values would be something like this. So I would say this is pretty much all the code you will ever need. So it's quite a simple thing to do, right? So just like maybe 10 lines of code in total to just get, a conf uh, get an integration up and running. Uh, you go through something called a restrictions manager. Uh, so there is a part here uh, which uh, and it's a typical bundle for all the Android developers here. You, you just get the bundle back and then you read keys and values from that bundle and that's pretty much it. That's everything you need to do. You need to be careful about providing default values and things that are not configured so you need to take care of, of these uh, cases like uh, really trying to, f to always have a value to return back so it can be used in the application. Um, you can actually uh, register a change receiver as well, so you can monitor for any changes the admin does. In my experience, this very rarely happens, even though everyone says it's possible, and it's more of like a configure and forget kind of a scenario, or the admin just modifies things uh, maybe once in a month or something like that, and I would just typically recommend this uh, for apps that are running for a long period of time, like kiosk applications, apps that run 24-7, right? In those cases, you really want to be able to monitor for these changes. For everything else, I would say don't complicate your code base and just stick to the, stick to the basics. Um, this is how it would look. So you have to register this in code, and this is the intent filter you have to uh, use. Apart from that, it's all standard native Android APIs for registering and unregistering a broadcast receiver. <coughs> you, you also need to... I, I suggest that you handle also these cases, like what happens if your app is installed on an unmanaged device. So you want to check if a managed configuration is available, and you want to actually check if the configuration is actually delivered and configured properly in cases of a managed application. Um, so how do you actually, let's talk about so this becomes a bit less about the technical stuff and more about getting an overview of how this whole process works through the MM console and how you end up deploying such a configuration. So you start by enabling Android Enterprise. So this is like a, uh, I'm showing how this is in Mobile Iron, but I'm trying to keep it as general as possible because every, every MM would have a very similar process to this. 
Uh, so you start by an action called uh, authorize Google. So there is a recommended method to connecting Android Enterprise to an EMM system. And it's just a matter of, of uh, having a, any type of a Google account. So you ne don't need to have a G Suite or anything like that. Any type of a Google account, preferably something owned by the company, would, um, would be used here. So you go through this small process of uh, setting up the name, setting up some contact details. Uh, and that, that's it. So basically, you click complete, and you get back something called a Google Enterprise ID, which is a short identifier for your organization. And remember this. So this is going to be used by US developers a bit later on. Uh, so another suggestion that I have, if you are going to test your integration with this, is try to use something called a work profile. So what this enables you to see is all the corner cases that might end up uh, when trying to deploy your application in the enterprise. So this, uh, what this, this does is splits your uh, device into two separate containers, a private part and a, a, and a work part, right? Uh, any, com any communication between those two parts is restricted, so you might run into issues doing that. Uh, trying to call things with intents, like trying to communicate with other applications might start failing. So e be sure to actually test those things here if you're getting your application ready for the enterprise. And this is a, this is a convenient way to do that. Um, so what uh, we want to go back to this kind of a workflow, right? So we want to avoid, uh, we want to separate what we do as developers and what uh, IT admins are doing. So our process is pretty much the same as we do any normal develop, uh, deployments on, on Google Play. We uh, add our application listing. Uh, and uh, the only difference pretty much is here in the pricing and distribution segment where you can tick a box called Manage Google Play, uh, which opens something like this. Uh, here you can also check. Uh, something, uh, another checkbox to actually privately target certain organizations. You can add those uh, by by this identifier that I mentioned. So that, that's a huge, uh, a really important thing because a lot of organizations don't want their applications to be publicly available on the App Store, especially when doing in-house applications and things like that. So you have to be aware there is. You can use Google Play, but there is still an option to actually privately distribute your applications. Um, so the way you add an organization, you specify the organization ID, which we saw a bit earlier, right? Um, and basically hit the release button as you would do for any normal application. You have to wait a while, like as with any other uh, app you, you release on the uh, App Store, you have to wait a while until this actually becomes released and it's available for the admin. Uh, and this is where your process as a developer stops, right? This is all you want to be doing. Uh, what happens on the other side is that ad the admin can see something like this. Uh, th this is the URL they need to visit. I think as soon as you share the application, this is approved by default. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, what em ends up happening in, in the EMM admin, the application that you just shared with the organization will show up something like this. So this is my sample. Uh, it will show up automatically. The IT admin would be able to, would be able to see it, uh, and then would actually be able to uh, go into the details of this application. And uh, there is a section. So I wasn't trying to show all the details about this, but again, this will be different based on the EMM you're using. But you end up getting to a screen and, and creating a configuration that would look something like this, where all the options that you can uh, when, when, which you can configure would get listed, right? Uh, the IT admin would be able to configure those values, click Save, and all these values would then be pushed back to the device, uh, and they'll be available for usage. So typically, there is kind of an interval between where, when the admins click Save and when these values actually get delivered to the, to the application itself. It's typically not that long. And in new installations, like new uh, employees installing your application, this is pretty much a, an immediate process. So you can make sure, you can pretty much be sure that these values will be there right at the beginning. Uh, so that was pretty much it. Uh, that is all I had. You can find links. So I created a sample. There is one sample from Google as well. Uh, where you can see the actual implementations. You, uh, and for 
anything that, any questions that you might have, you want to do a deeper integration in, in an EMM system, you are considering actually uh, going deeper into the enterprise segment, just you can reach out anytime. Uh, that's part of my job to talk with people that want to do this sort of integrations, and we are very interested in growing our ecosystem and just l having more and more people that actually optimize their applications for the enterprise. So thank you. Darko, thank you. Thank you very much, Darko.